ridge through the south of the United States. The nation and the world watched in dismay the scenes of devastation and human suffering. It took a toll of 29 lives. The same year, and in fact every year, an invisible killer is suspected of causing thousands of deaths in the United States. It has crept into many homes unnoticed. It's radon, cancer-causing natural radioactive gas. As estimated by the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, radon kills from 20 to 80 people in this country every day. Usually, people see the dangers of radiation through accidents such as Chernobyl. Despite widespread fear of nuclear power and radiation, radon exposures produce higher doses than dreaded nuclear accidents. However, radon is a type of radiation that is not man-made. Nobody put it there. It's part of nature, surrounding us everywhere at any time. Radon comes from the natural decay of uranium that is found in all soils. It seeps to the surface through minute cracks in the soil, but you cannot see, smell, or taste it because radon is a radioactive gas. Out of doors, radon disperses in the air, so levels are very low. However, once inside a closed space, such as a home, Radon can build up to high concentrations and pose a health risk. The historical unit of activity concentration is picocurie of radon per one liter, describing the number of radioactive atoms of radon in one liter of air. In the international system, radon is measured in becquerel per cubic meter. One picocurie per liter corresponds to 37 becquerel per cubic meter. The level when a home needs to be fixed for radon is called action level. It differs from country to country. For example, in the United States, it is four picocurie per liter, or about 150 becquerel per cubic meter in the international system. Since all houses stand mostly on ground, indoor radon can be found everywhere in the world. In this film, we'll go to different countries and tread different grounds in search of radon. In Nordic climates, Houses were always built solidly to protect people from cold. In the 80s, it was found out that many new buildings showed elevated radon readings. But in fact, the alarm bell had rung two decades earlier. We are here in Stockholm in the Swedish Radiation Protection Institute. This is truly a historic site with regard to radon research because it was here that in 1956, a young student named Bengt Holtquist presented his thesis under Ralph Siebert on the importance of the natural radiation environment with particular emphasis on the indoor radon problem. Unfortunately, the scientific international community took little notice of his excellent work. Today, however, we know how far-sighted he was because he predicted correctly that some segment of the population is getting an increased dose in radon problem dwellings. Much of the pioneering work in Sweden on these radon problem dwellings was carried out in houses built of a special type of concrete. This building material met the demand for house construction on a large scale. Unfortunately, 
One of the components of this concrete was natural uranium-bearing stone, called alum shale. Walls made of this material were found to emit radon. In laboratory conditions, scientists continued to investigate methods to improve their understanding of how radon emanates from different materials. As a result of radon studies in Sweden, alum shale was prohibited from use in house construction. However, houses that were built before this investigation was carried out still provide shelter for their residents. Swedish radiation experts continue to monitor these problem houses. The gamma radiation here is almost 90 micro-röntgens per hour, which is about seven or eight times the normal background. And the reason for this rather high gamma radiation is that the building material, which is alum shale concrete, contains rather high concentrations of uranium and radium. Radon is a health risk only when it gets into a closed space, such as a home. What are the risks of living with radon that has entered and stayed in your home? Radon gas decays into radioactive particles that can get trapped in your lungs when you breathe. As they break down further, these particles release small bursts of energy. This can damage lung tissue and lead to lung cancer over the course of one's lifetime. We did a big jump from Europe, across the Atlantic, right into the heartland of America. We're in Pennsylvania, where the America we know of today started over 200 years ago. In many cases, the history of Pennsylvania is linked to buildings. Of course, what comes to mind are the beautiful historic buildings in Philadelphia, such as the Constitution Hall, or the little two-story building where Betsy Ross made the first American flag. But we didn't come for the historic Pennsylvania. We came for a modern, single-family dwelling in New Berlinville, Pennsylvania, where the largest radon program in the world was triggered off. The house of the Watrous family. How did you get to know about the radon problem in your house. I got to know about radon through my, through my job. The first time that the radiation detection stations were activated at the Limerick Generating Station, the power plant that I, that I worked at, was the weekend of December 2nd, 19, 1984. Uh, since that first uh, weekend, every time that I would go into a radiation detection station, it would indicate that I was highly contaminated throughout my entire body. Uh, and specifically localized right around my head. Then about two weeks uh, later, I basically was talking to my wife and I said, uh, Diane, obviously I'm not picking it up from the job site because there is nothing in and around there outside of just fuel sitting there. So I have to be picking something up, something up from, from right around here. This hazard, yet unknown but lurking around the corner, drove Stan to the verge of a nervous breakdown. The health of his family was at stake. One day he tried a little experiment to determine where this danger came from. So what I did is I walked into an administration building, didn't even go into the turbine building, the radways, the reactor building, container, nothing. I walked into an administration building, turned right around, walked out, heading for a, a radiation detection station. I stepped into it. The alarms went off, sirens went off. LEDs enunciated indicating that I was highly contaminated and I just walked in walked in out of my car so obviously you know you you could put two and two together really quick so at that particular time then the the, the technicians came and said quote unquote oh no not you again at that time I went from a normal rational individual that I was totally emotional I was saying I know I'm picking this stuff up from home I got kid children my children, I know there's something wrong in my house. I really wish you guys could come out to the house and, and help me out. 
The investigation that followed revealed that his house stood over a huge underground rock body containing uranium, which was the source of radon. Typically, radon would move up through the ground into a house through cracks and other holes in the foundation. The house traps radon inside where it can build up. In the case of Stanley Watrous's house, indoor radon levels were over 2,000 picocurie per liter, which was equivalent in terms of lung cancer risk to smoking 135 packs of cigarettes per day. The family had to leave the house immediately. Engineers and technicians moved in to subject the house to a concentrated cleanup and mitigation effort. Two basic techniques were used in combination. First, cracks in the floor and walls were sealed. Second, pipes were laid and fans installed to reduce radon. Such systems are called sub-slab depressurization. In this design, Radon gas is removed from below the concrete floor and foundation before it can enter the home. After the mitigation work had been done in Stan Watrous's house, the ventilation pipes are the most visible part of the radon reduction scheme. The readings are back to normal. We have a active mitigation system that has worked, is still working. How do we know? We test every single day. This story has an apparently happy ending, except that, understandably, the Watrous family is concerned about the years of residence in their home before the high radon levels were detected. The question remains, how about the homes with high radon levels that are unknown to people who live in them? Radon knows no geographical boundaries. Radon does not care about political systems. And China is no exception. We're here in the heartland of Beijing on Tiananmen Square, and we will take you to Xi'an province, which is most interesting with regards to radon and its underground cave dwellers. Over a thousand years ago, the people in Shanxi province decided to go underground. And they had two good reasons for doing this. The first one was it saves some building material if you just dig a hole in the ground and call it home. The second reason is that this area has a very rough climate. It gets up to 40 degrees in the summer and below minus 25 degrees centigrade in the winter. All over China, more than one million people live in underground cave dwellings. In a typical cave dwelling, all the walls and the floor are just bare soil. Therefore, the radon can emanate freely into the room air, and radon levels well above 400 becquerels per cubic meter have been found inside. The only source of ventilation is typically a little window by the side of the door and the heating is carried out with means of a stove where the flue gases are led through a so-called khan, a heated brick bed. In order to ensure that the cave dwellings remain smoke-free, the flue gases are ducted up to 10 meters above ground through a special chimney. Life in this part of the world has changed very little. Centuries-old agricultural practices are not affected by the course of time. Tools of trade remain pretty much the same. However, elements of modern life, such as radon research, are brought in to improve the quality of life, the very length of life itself. This is Copperbidi, South Australia, in the middle of nowhere, or rather about 850 kilometers north of Adelaide. 
the world's largest opal mining area, where about 80% of the total world production of opals is mined. The miners stake out a claim, a bulldozer removes the overburden, and then they sink a shaft into the ground about 30 to 50 meters deep. Since 1915, when opals were first discovered in Cooper Pedy, miners resorted to an unusual and unique way of living underground, digging a shelter in the rock. This dwelling is still called by its original name, a dugout. So we're now in a dugout cave dwelling, and we have about five to ten meters of sandstone above us. Uh, how did you build this house? Well, we. Um partner had a tunneling machine and so we uh, tunneled it with uh, the machine and um, we got pegs, uh, pegged it as a campsite, uh, as a mining claim, applied for a campsite and uh, we applied to live here. And how many rooms does this whole house have? Uh, about um, eight or nine or ten I suppose and there's five of us living here. Uh, and so if you need another room you just another yes, chamber into the rock. Yes, Wonderful. there's always the chance that you might find opal. We are here in the office of Mr. Abdullah, the biggest opal dealer of Kopopidi. Mr. Abdullah, mm -hmm. can you tell us a typical work day, how you spend your day in the office? See, I spend uh, every day this 15 hours in, in the Hataka. In the, I'm uh, uh, working here, I cut the opal here, and, uh, you see, and I sell opal here, uh, you see, I live here too. And as you are the biggest opal dealer in Kobobidi, how much would this be worth that we have here in front of us? See, here is a, it's about over a quarter million dollars. Yeah. Now, although we are about 20 meters from the entrance, the outdoor area, and about five to ten meters uh, below the subsurface, radon levels and gamma dose rate levels are within the normal range. Radon concentration is between 100 and 150 becquerels per cubic meter, and the gamma dose rate varies between 70 and 90 nanosieverts per hour. The reason for this being that we have, again, very good ventilation conditions with ventilation shafts equipped with electrically powered ventilators. Of course, it doesn't take that much time and effort to have a ventilation shaft drilled into a dugout. There are different levels of affluence in this mining town, though basically every home is an underground dugout. In its universal design, the ventilation system is the same for each dugout home, and in many ways stands for the landmark of the town. But the most important feature is evident. It is simple and it works. With this comforting thought, we leave the mining town of Cooper PD, proudly called by the residents the opal capital of the world. Petrovice, a charming little country town about one hour's drive south of the capital of Czechoslovakia. The countryside is typically rural with rolling hills and forests. All in all, a non-industrial area giving a very peaceful impression. Radon levels in the soil have been measured with values up to 1.6 mega becquerels per cubic meter and as the radon diffuses into the homes, homes have been detected with radon levels up to 10,000 becquerels per cubic meter. Therefore, this area is very well suited as a lung cancer epidemiological study area. All this area has some 68 communities with more than 2,000 of dwellings where higher concentration of radon higher than in our, in the normal part of other parts of the country can be supposed. What would be the typical average radon level indoors from your uh, preliminary studies? 
In this very specific area, it is uh, more than 700, so exactly 730 becquerel per cubic meter, which is uh, tw 20, almost 20 times higher than the average situation in our country. As an omnipresent substance, radon makes no difference between homes and public buildings, such as this school. In the school of Petrovice, we have measured 1,800 becquerel per cubic meter of radon dolphin products. The radon problem is not limited to modern architecture only. In this particular case, we're standing in front of a house that was built about a hundred years ago. It is currently being renovated. And still, in the bedroom, we can find levels of radon up to 10,000 becquerels per cubic meter. The source for the radon in this building is the cellar. In Prague, capital of the Czech Republic, at the Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology, Scientists are carrying out extensive radon research. Various techniques are used to verify how radon is transported from the soil into the air. But of course the ultimate goal is to understand the potential health risk of radon inhalation. During lifetime people take different risks. Some of them are quite unnecessary and can be avoided. When asked, People at least understand the nature of these risks, but tend to ignore them. These are the known ones. Radon is a risk that is still largely unknown to many people who are unaware of this problem, no matter which part of the world they live in. At home, a proverbial safe place, it is difficult to perceive something that is not visible as a danger. However, health physics has collected a vast body of knowledge on radon and continues to study it. One of the established research laboratories in Europe is the Institute of Physics and Biophysics at the University of Salzburg, Austria. The scientists from this laboratory have done radon research for the past 30 years. This fundamental science has a practical spin-off for a consumer. Radon research uses rather sophisticated equipment. So what can you do as an individual to find out whether you have a radon problem in your home, school or office? Well, industry offers a wide range of low-cost and simple devices which enable you to do just that, do a measurement. It can be an ionization chamber with an electrode. It can be a charcoal canister or a track edge film. In either case, Radon either changes the detector or leaves a trace behind, which is then analyzed in the laboratory. Whatever system is best suited for you, we recommend you contact the Public Health Service. Radon is part of our environment and has always been there. It is only in our time that radon has been identified as a potential health risk. The following key points are to be remembered. Elevated radon exposures are a global issue. Radon causes lung cancer. Test to determine exposures. Fix if elevated exposures are found. Elevated exposures can be effectively dealt with.